Ever since I finished Tears of the Kingdom on stream last year, I've been wanting an excuse to look back on some of the Zelda games that have come before it, especially since Zelda is a franchise that has been by my side while growing up, and that's all thanks in part to my dad who has been an avid Zelda fan since the first game released back in 86. Although I definitely haven't completed every single Zelda game, and there may be a few titles I haven't even touched before, especially if you include some spin-off titles like Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land, I do believe that I know the Legend of Zelda franchise enough in order to put every single title against each other and rank them based on my experience with each title. That's right, the official Frankenstein Legend of Zelda tier list is finally here, so let's get to it. Okay, now before we get started, I do want to leave a small disclaimer that this entire tier list is just going to be my opinion. So if you feel like roasting me in the comments, please do so in a peaceful manner way. And on top of that, we are only going to be looking at the mainline Zelda games. No spin-offs like Link's Crossbow Training or any of the Hyrule Warriors games. We are strictly looking at the mainline games that are in the main timeline of sorts. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so starting out the tier list, we are starting with The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds. Now, I got this game as soon as I got my 3DS, I think back in like 2012-ish? I don't really remember when this came out. All I remember is I got this game when I got my Nintendo 3DS, on top of like Super Mario 3D Land and whatnot. And I just remember constantly playing this game over and over and over again until I eventually got to the point where I could actually beat it. I remember listening to the music and I'm like, oh, this classic Zelda music, the overworld theme, getting into Death Mountain, it was so freaking cool. I just remember watching videos at the time and learning that, oh, this is kind of like a remake, but not really of A Link to the Past because it resembles a lot of what a Link to the Past was and is. Being able to phase into the wall I think was a super cool mechanic in solving puzzles that way. And spoiler alert, that ending where Link and Zelda both wish for low rule to get restored, I that brought tears to my ear. Uh, <laughs> Tears to my ears, no, tears to my eyes when I first witnessed that ending theme. And just overall, I think it's a really solid Zelda game. But compared to some of the others, I don't think it's S worthy, but I do think it belongs in A. Specifically, just because it was one of the first games that I got to play on 3DS and I beat on 3DS. And overall, I just really enjoyed my time with it. Now, speaking of A Link to the Past, I've never actually played this one. I've had a Super Nintendo all of my life, and thanks to, you know, my parents, but oddly enough, my dad being the Zelda fan that he is, for some odd reason, we don't have A Link to the Past, so I never got to play it on original hardware. I never bought it in any of the virtual consoles. I remember playing like the first five minutes when it came out for Nintendo Switch Online, but I never continued through it. Now, I do know A Link to the Past was like the first stepping stones of what all the Zelda games ended up turning into, which was, you know, going to multiple different dungeons, actually having a story with, you know, characters that have actual, like, text dialogue that you can go up to and talk to. And I just think A Link to the Past is really the first stepping stone that allowed for Ocarina of Time and games that came after it just to turn to the Zelda series into what it was. So just for that, even though I've never played the game, I think I would put A Link to the Past in S tier. I do know most uh, Super Nintendo games hold up, so I, I think it's safe to assume that A Link to the Past belongs in S tier. Anyway, the next game on the list is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now, I remember when I got my Nintendo Switch Christmas of 2017, and Breath of the Wild was the main game that me and my brother were asking and begging to have. I just remember when it came out in 2017, in March, I would watch videos to try and see and grasp on what the title was and is about without learning too much spoiler... spoiler... spoilery? Fuck, I, I can't speak, but either way, I didn't want to spoil myself on the story, and I remember opening it up in Christmas 2017 
and just seeing the box art, seeing the brand new console right after, you know, playing with the Nintendo Wii for, you know, the first eight months that, you know, the Switch was out and finally having the ability to play the brand new Zelda game. And I remember I turned on the Switch for the first time, set it up, booted up The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, one of the first games we ended up playing. And I just remember I was somewhat disappointed. I've never played an open world game before it. Even though Breath of the Wild brought a lot of people into the Zelda series, I personally thought, at least at the time, that it, it was an okay game. I didn't beat it until years later, but after I played through it and, you know, grew connected with the characters and actually figured out how the game played with, you know, all the weapon breaking and messing with all the mechanics, I, I started to like it a bit more, but I don't know, just Breath of the Wild, for me, you know, something felt missing. Although it was open world, there just was so much more Nintendo could have done with it, but I think we would have waited, you know, four more years longer, because I remember it was like in development hell for like the longest time. We knew that Breath of the Wild was in development since like 2012 or something like that for the Nintendo Wii U, and it eventually came out, and everyone's expectations were blown away, but for me, my my expectations were a little too high for this game. <laughs> but overall, I did actually enjoy the game, Mifa, Sidon, you know, all all the other characters. I, they were they were good. They were good. And I think, you know, playing through Age of Calamity, even though this isn't on the list, really made me grow towards liking Breath of the Wild even more, especially with all the characters and whatnot. So with that because I like the characters, I'm going to put Breath of the Wild in high B tier. Again, this is my own personal opinion. I didn't, I just, I don't know. I just, I just felt like there was something missing. I, I, I just, I, I want to blame the, the dungeon designs for that. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get on to the next game in the list. The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures. Now, I never played this game growing up and it wasn't until you know sometime last year that I saw this game at a retro game store I remember seeing this game walking in and I'm like ooh multiplayer Zelda I've I, I played the original Four Swords on the 3DS when you know the anniversary edition came out thanks to the DSiWare but Four Swords Adventures for the GameCube never played it and I've always wanted to try it, but I, I just know, you know, you had to buy a GameCube, buy the Game Boy Link cables, had multiple different Game Boys. And luckily, I have a job now. I could make my own money and save my own money to get all the stuff to finally play this game. And that's what I did. I bought the game, $120, probably down the drain, but I'm making it worthwhile by, you know, I'm only playing the game multiplayer with my dad you know another big zelda fan in the family and we are slowly enjoying our time with the game we haven't beaten it just yet i mean we're i think as of making this video we're still only on like world two or level two again i i think the multiplayer aspect of zelda games is really fun especially when you're playing with someone who actually can play a zelda game so with that i love the multiplayer fun but it's quite expensive to play the game so i'm gonna put four swords in b tier uh only because it is very expensive to play the game but it's really fun to play the story so far is you know kind of lackluster but it's the multiplayer feeling of being able to do stuff together and you know looking up at the tv and then back at the game boy advance it almost reminds me of the wii u and i really like the wii u i really hope that they remake this game at some point oh and i guess i should mention that the the shadow link battle or whatever whatever the battle mini game of in four swords adventures is really fun uh, I love the combat of fighting each other in the game. It's it's just so good. After Four Swords Adventures, we also have the original Four Swords, which was on the Game Boy Advance. I've never played the like original on hardware of Game Boy Advance, but I did end up playing the uh, Four Swords Anniversary Edition, which I assume is just the same game, but on 3DS and allows for download play and whatnot. I remember seeing it on the eShop for free back on the, like the 25th anniversary of Zelda. And I think it was out for 
probably a year or two before they delisted it. And luckily, me and my friends and my siblings, we all ended up downloading it just in time before they delisted it. And so we all have it on our 3DSs. And so we played through it a lot. Now, the, the one thing I hate about Four Swords is there's only like four or five levels. And each of those levels have like four or five different variants, but you gotta replay those levels like three times to get three different kinds of keys. I think it's like a bronze key, or no, no, no. I think it's a silver key, a gold key, and then a colored key. And then once you get all the colored keys, you go and kill Vadi, and then that's the true ending. And I just remember getting frustrated because at the time, my brother wasn't really good at Zelda games. Neither was any of my other younger brothers. And I had a friend who would, you know, play with me, but we would mostly just fuck around and, you know, never really beat the game. But as a multiplayer Zelda, I think it's really fun. I can't wait till they add it to Nintendo Switch Online. That way I can play with my dad and my brother, possibly on stream, especially since now that my older brother can actually play Zelda games without dying all the time, I think, I hope. But because of constantly replaying multiple levels, I'm going to put the original Four Swords probably in... I want to say C tier. Link's Awakening DX. Now, I've never played the original Game Boy Color version of Link's Awakening, but I have played through the Nintendo Switch version. I think I got that game through like a flea market or something. Some guy had a stand and he was selling it for like 30 bucks or something like that. I was like, ooh, that's a steal, especially since it's a remake for a Game Boy game. I played through it, really liked it. I didn't 100% it, I wasn't really wanting to collect all of the stupid seashells and whatnot, and because of that I didn't collect all the heart pieces and whatnot that, that was in the remake on the Nintendo Switch, but other than that, classic Zelda game for its time, I think it was pretty cool, so I'm gonna put Link's Awakening probably in B tier, especially for the fact that at the time when it came out, when it did, it was the one and only Zelda game that you could play on the original Game Boy, and then later on the Game Boy Color that added, you know, extra stuff like the Color Dungeon. But Link's Awakening, good portable game. Definitely play through the remake if you can stomach through watching frame drops all the time. That was the only issue I had with the remake. Um, but other than that, Link's Awakening DX, B tier. Finally, on to games that I really, really enjoyed. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Now, let me tell you, straight S tier, straight S tier. I'm, I'm not going to delay anything. I mean, I'm gonna obviously talk about the game, but Majora's Mask, S tier. Perfect freaking Zelda game. Of course, just my own opinion. I, I do see the flaws. I'm not a big fan of the three day timer, but I think it works with the setting in Termina. I think I mentioned this on stream before, but I remember playing this game as a kid being super scared, especially on the third day when, you know, the moon would cause the earth to shake and I thought it was some giant that was out to come kill us or some giant robot or something. I don't know what I was thinking as a, you know, six year old, but I guess at that time that's when your mind and your imagination you know goes wild and so i would always have to play the song of time or else you know my brother would start yelling at me you know give me the freaking controller so i can play song of time i don't want to see the you know what what happens when the the moon crashes or whatever it, it was it was scary times but eventually i remember playing through the game in its entirety using my dad's old majora's mask guidebook which is torn to shreds because kids i was young I was stupid, and I hate that I tore up the guide, but I remember playing through it, 100%ing it, using the guidebook, and then the 3DS version came out, I 100%ed it by memory, didn't use the guidebook that time, and I think my memory, if it doesn't fail me, uh, I, I know I, I played it, you know, like 10 years ago, but if I go back and play through Majora's Mask, you know, today, and, you know, remember how to do everything, it's it's just such a good game music's amazing it sticks with me i still listen to the music to this day just you know ask my girlfriend every time we drive in the car we're listening to majora's mask soundtrack you can't escape me majora's mask you're, you're just so good speaking of majora's mask we wouldn't have majora's mask if we didn't have ocarina of time both games were built on the same engine now, I never got into playing Ocarina of Time. I remember messing around on my dad's old save file on the Nintendo 64. I remember turning into Adult Link 
and you know being in the temple of time and temple of time's music was so eerie and as a small child it's really scared the hell out of me especially walking out as adult link and you know seeing all the gibdos and whatnot in castletown it was just really scary again i don't know what it is with the nintendo 64 games and just scaring the shit out of me as a small child but they did because of that i never really went through playing ocarina of time it wasn't until the nintendo switch online came out and i got a nintendo 64 controller for my switch that i was finally able and willing to go through and playing Ocarina of Time. And I used a guide online, I think Zelda Dungeons, I played through Ocarina of Time and didn't really like it that much. I don't know why. I think I played it like a year or two ago. And I think just playing through it at that point in time, I don't think the game has aged well. If we're basing it on when I actually played through the game, I would say Ocarina of Time is B tier, but I know everyone's going to scream and yell at me for putting it in B tier, not S tier, because I know Ocarina of Time is basically the basis of every single future 3D Zelda game up until Breath of the Wild. Again, this is my personal opinion. I didn't really like Ocarina of Time all that much, so I'ma put it in B tier. Please forgive me. <laughs> All right, the next two Zelda games are a big pair. We have The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages and The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. Now I've never played either one of these and I know they're on Nintendo Switch Online and you have the, the Game Boy trading functionality and whatnot, but again, I've never played the games. So this is where I come in and I change F tier to never played, if I can, you know, type. And this is exactly where Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons are going because I've never personally played them and I am looking forward to playing them at some point. I probably won't look at them as fondly as some of the other games, especially since, you know, they're a Game Boy game. I think if Nintendo goes in and remakes Oracle of Ages and Oracle of the Seasons in a similar vein uh, in which they remade Link's Awakening, I think I would probably really like the game. But until then, I guess I will probably suffer through the Nintendo Switch Online version at some point. Not really willing to put it on any tier other than changing F tier to never played because I don't think a single Zelda game deserves an F. All right, next game is Phantom Hourglass. Another game that I've never really 100%ed, let alone even beating the game. I do remember, you know, just randomly setting sail through the seven seas and going through all of the islands. And I remember my favorite island is the Nintendo DS island where all the Gorons live. And I think it plays the Goron City theme. They brought that back from Ocarina of Time or something like that. I don't remember, but you know, cool boat game. It's a continuation of the story, like right after where Wind Waker left off. And because of that, I think that's pretty cool, but I don't really have an opinion of it other than I do hear that online, people don't like the one dungeon that you constantly got to go back to and you have like the whole hourglass and you got to complete it in a certain amount of time, but you got to constantly go back to it throughout the entire story. And again, it's on the DS, so it has all the DS functions, you know, using the touch screen, the microphone, and people didn't really like that. I personally don't hate that. I think that's pretty cool that they were able to make a cool Zelda adventure using Nintendo DS features. But again, I've never really, you know, 100% played it, but I do remember playing around with it. So because of that, I'm gonna put Phantom Hourglass probably in C tier. Anyway, next game, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. I remember when this game came out back in like 2011, my dad got it for the Wii and he got the new like he didn't get the zelda wii remote but he got a blue wii remote that had wii motion plus inside and he was like okay this is my wii remote nobody's allowed to touch it and i was like but but what what if we want to play wii sports resort dogfight we we can't do that without your remote other than that i remember getting home from school and watching him play it for a bit i've only seen you know clips of him playing it i never got to sit in the living room and actually watch him fully play it because you know small child me I can't watch other people play I want to play it myself 
but it wasn't until the Nintendo Switch HD release came out that I actually played through it, 100%ed the game. I really liked it, actually. I think the only small gripe I had was the shield breaking and the whole crafting mechanics. I think it's mainly because I was going through the game like really quickly, and again, I, I was using a guide, and I feel that when you use guides, you tend to just go through the game really quickly, and because you go through the game really quickly and don't explore every small nook and cranny you don't end up collecting all of the things you need for crafting which makes crafting in video games like this kind of make the whole experience go downhill i do like having a wooden shield at the beginning of the game but you know the second dungeon's a fire dungeon and it you know absolutely destroys your shield and at that point it's really hard to get to the iron shield anyway i'm just rambling on about the stupid crafting mechanic other than that i i like the story i grew to like the music ballad of the goddess play it in reverse and it's just zelda's lullaby i think that's a really nice touch it came out in zelda's 25th anniversary it was really solid game i think it deserves uh I was going to say A tier, but I, I I think it deserves B tier. Definitely below Breath of the Wild, though, but above Four Swords. So that's where we're going to put it. Next game, another one of my favorite Zelda games of all time, mainly because I remember sitting on the family computer, scrolling through Nintendo's website, or uh, I think what was Nintendo's website, or seeing an ad for it. I don't know. I just remember I saw Train. I love trains. Zelda? I love Zelda. Uh, uh, dad, 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 come here, come here, come here. Look at this, look at this. Spear tracks, I, I, I need it, I need it. It's coming out soon. I, I, for my birthday, please, 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 please. And I did. I got a Nintendo DS, I got Kirby Superstar Ultra, and I got the Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. Now, I do think dad also got it just so he can play it as well. Uh, I think he ended up playing it at some point, but I just, I just remember getting it and booting it up on my DS, getting to like the next train station or something, and then instantly getting stuck, and I couldn't figure out what to do, and I dropped the game for like two years, picked it up again, and then I figured out what I was supposed to do, and from there on, the rest of the game was like a piece of cake for some odd reason, even though there's harder sections later on in the game. I don't know, it was just the stupid puzzle at the very beginning of the game really frustrated me. But eventually, I played through it, I really liked it, best songs in the game is the realm overworld as well as the troubled realm look it up on youtube both solid quality game uh quality game soundtracks songs 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 that that's that's what we're looking for i really like trains and i i really like zelda and i'm i'm biased for both of them so i'm sorry i'm putting spirit tracks in s tier you can flame me later i know there's some flaws but i really enjoyed playing through the game 10 times more than Phantom Hourglass. I, I don't know why. I just... Listen, you can't get in between a kid and his train. Next Zelda game. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. In case if you guys don't know, I did play through Tears of the Kingdom on release day and throughout the following months over on my YouTube channel and I think on Twitch. I don't remember if I was simulcasting at that point, but either way, you can watch my entire playthrough over on my YouTube channel, so... I'll probably have a link to a playlist down below. That way you can just watch through them all. Really had fun playing this game. It was, you know, the first Zelda game I got to buy and own on release day. I got to play it live with you guys. I met some nice viewers over in chat. You guys are amazing. Ending shout out right here. Thanks for watching the video. But yeah, Tears of the Kingdom really liked it really enjoyed it i think streaming it made me enjoy the game 10 times over the dungeons were even better than breath of the wild i remember going straight to the rito section because i think that's where the game was pointing me to go first and exploring the wind temple and seeing all of the the arcs and the build up to getting there i know that some of the other dungeons weren't as cool but i just the game is just so good uh, all of the hype built up back in 2019 when you know nintendo announced that they, they were making breath of the wild 2 which ended up being tears of the kingdom seeing footage of the sky islands and seeing what it could possibly be it was kind of lacking when the game actually came out that the Sky Islands weren't as a big part of the story like we were all hoping, but 
Other than that, I'm still going to place Tears of the Kingdom in A tier. I think I enjoyed, personally, Tears of the Kingdom more than Breath of the Wild. The only major downfall of Tears of the Kingdom is it's the same world as Breath of the Wild, but I think if we didn't have Breath of the Wild and we only had Tears of the Kingdom, I think more people would appreciate and like Tears of the Kingdom a hundred times better than Breath of the Wild if Breath of the Wild didn't actually exist. Next game, The Legend of Zelda, The Minish Cap. I gotta say, this game is like borderline on the never played tier. I do remember at least trying it out on my friend Mason. Shout out Mason. He was one of my elementary slash middle school friends. I remember going to his house and he had it booted up on virtual console on his Wii U and we kind of played through it a bit because I think he got stuck and he needed help. So I was like, hey, let me just play through for a bit. And I remember just sitting there and playing it for like four or five hours straight. Didn't get close to the end. I know some of the collectibles, like uh, the little like medallions that you gotta fuse with uh, certain NPCs. I know locking some of the pieces of hearts behind that mechanic, a lot of people didn't like. But other than that, I think I think Minish Cap is, is a good game, but I don't have too much ex of experience with it. Um, so I'm just gonna put it in C tier, but probably high C. I'm gonna put it above Four Swords and Phantom Hourglass. Again, I need to go back through and play it at some point, probably on stream. Sorry, I just don't have much else to say on the Minish Cap. Down to our last five Zelda games. The next one is Wind Waker. Now, for those of you who don't know, I just recently finished my playthrough of The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker as of recording this video, and I really enjoyed playing through the game. The story was so cool, starting off with Link's sister getting kidnapped and then going to find her and whatnot. The final sequence with fighting Puppet Ganon, the three phases, really cool, and then Funnily enough, stabbing Ganon's ass multiple times and then finally ending with a final strike to the head, which is the worst way to go. I know Twilight Princess kind of makes it worse, but with a cartoony Link stabbing Ganon in the head, it was insane, especially since Ganon just wanted Hyrule back. But the King of Hyrule was like, no, fuck you. We, we can't have Hyrule back. Ganon was like at his breaking point. Again, the entire playthrough is up on my YouTube channel. I'll probably leave another playlist link down below if you want to completely watch the Wind Waker playthrough. Either way, I really enjoyed playing through Wind Waker. Um, there was a few pieces of hearts that I really hated collecting. Uh, cough, cough, the fucking golden feathers. Other than that, I really enjoyed setting sail. Not a whole lot of good music other than Dragon Roost Island and the Great Sea, but other than that, I think I think Wind Waker deserves like probably B tier. I'm gonna put it above Skyward Sword. I think I enjoyed Wind Waker much more than Skyward Sword, but not as much as Breath of the Wild. I think Breath of the Wild was ten times better than Wind Waker. All right, one of the last garbage Zelda games. I remember when Triforce Heroes came out back on the 3DS. I I was hype about it. Another you know, multiplayer Zelda game other than Four Swords that I can finally play. It has online play. That was dope as hell. I had a friend, again, shout out Mason. He also got the game and it was me and him online for like the longest time. And then eventually my uh, older brother, I convinced him to get another copy of the game. So we finally had three copies of the game. But at that point, Nobody was really playing Triforce Heroes. I never got to see the ending because, again, some of the later stages were just hard as hell. I don't know how anybody was able to get through it. I think if Nintendo remade this game on better hardware and I could play it on a bigger screen, I think I would have the ability to see this game through the end. But because I couldn't do that, I'm putting Triforce Heroes in D tier. It was an okay game, but not pushing limits. I think the only thing it brought to the series was different clothing that did different effects. And I think that was a pretty cool change uh, other than just constantly wearing the green tunic. All right, next Zelda game, our third to last, Twilight Princess. Now, Twilight Princess is another game that I remember solely 
in my childhood years. Uh, I remember, I think it was probably like 2006 when it came out, 2007. I, I don't know, whenever the Wii came out, that's when Twilight Princess came out. But I didn't have a Nintendo Wii until probably 2008, 2009. And because of that, I actually remember sitting on my dad's lap and watching him play the game in 2006 because at the time he didn't buy a Wii to play the new Zelda game. He still had his GameCube and he bought the GameCube version of Twilight Princess. Bless his soul because that version of Twilight Princess, expensive as hell to play today. Either way, I just remembered sitting on my dad's lap, watching him play, using his guidebook. He had this giant poster on the side of the wall next to his recliner and it was like a map of Hyrule of Twilight Princess and it had every single heart piece and where each of the pose were and I just remember you know small small snippets of him playing through the game and it wasn't till Twilight Princess HD came out and even later on in life that I uh, revisited the GameCube version that I actually sat through and played through the game and I gotta say Twilight Princess is basically Ocarina of Time but better it had the realistic art style it had the same tropes that ocarina of time had you know you play through the first three dungeons and then go to find out oh i have like five other dungeons that i have to complete now every single setting was really good the desert awesome arbiter's grounds basically being a giant prison the snow temple is just a giant log cabin i think that just Every single one of the locations in Twilight Princess is just really cool. I mean, Death Mountain, all the Gorons are wearing like tribal patterns and the Goron City theme from Ocarina of Time is in Twilight Princess and it sounds 10 times better. Lost Woods is also in Twilight Princess, sounds 10 times better. I just gotta say, Twilight Princess, I really enjoyed the game and the ability to change in between Link and Wolf Link just made the game 10 times better and having the wolf link amiibo be utilized in breath of the wild when breath of the wild came out i think that's just so good and so because of that i'm putting twilight princess in s tier i just really like twilight princess i think a bit better than spirit tracks actually i just again twilight princess really solid all right last two zelda games going back to the og the first legend of zelda i remember going on a church trip or something like that some equivalent of that we stopped at some mall to eat lunch or something and there was a GameStop and you know at the time you know my parents would give me the money and I would buy you know my lunch and I would buy my brother's lunch and because I was the one in control of the money I always had you know 15 20 bucks left over because I would always buy the cheapest lunch and I just remember walking into the GameStop and seeing a download code for The Legend of Zelda for the Nintendo 3DS and I, I picked it up and I looked at it and I'm like, I have $25. This is a $6 eShop game or like a $5 eShop game or something like that. I was like, I've never played the OG Zelda. I'm gonna get this. I'm sure my parents won't care. And I remember talking to my dad, you know, later on, like years later and telling him, oh, by the way, I did this. And he was like, I don't care. <laughs> hey, you got to experience the OG Zelda. And then on top of that, he's like, you always came home, you, you know, with 20 bucks. And anytime we gave any of the other kids money, they would come home with like two nickels. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't care that you were able to buy yourself lunch and buy a game and still bring home, you know, 25 bucks. Like, play your Legend of Zelda. And, you know, I couldn't play through The Legend of Zelda without the save state, so I'm glad I was able to play it on the Nintendo 3DS. I, I remember some of the later dungeons being, you know, hard as hell to get through, mainly because, you know, back then, the, the way developers would make the games hard is they would just spam a shit ton of enemies all over the place, and it just, it sucked. But with save states, I was able to get through the game, and... I enjoyed playing through the game. I, I hated how a lot of things were hidden. You have to play the game with a guide or else you're not gonna know where the hell you're supposed to go. But I think that was kind of the point back in the 80s when games were coming out. You kind of had to, you know, make it a really tough challenge. That way, you know, people would constantly, constantly play it over and over and over again to figure it out. Uh, but shout outs to my dad. He does remember where, you know, 90% of the things are 
surprisingly enough. He can't remember shit nowadays, but for some odd reason, the original Legend of Zelda, he remembers everything. He can play it without a guidebook. Quite literally insane. Kudos to him. But without the first game in the series, we wouldn't have the legendary Zelda games that we do. And so because of that, I'm putting the OG Zelda game in A tier. Uh, it would be S tier if it played and aged a bit well. I think if they remade the game, I think that would be cool. But I'm going to put it in low A tier, almost borderline B tier. Um, but, you know, again, without it, we wouldn't have the Zelda games that we do now. All right. Last game for the tier list. Uh, the Legend of Zelda, The Adventure of Link. Worst game ever. I'm putting it in D tier. I don't think I need to explain it. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll do a bit of uh, I'll do a bit of explaining. Uh, I remember playing it. Well, which which system did I start playing it on? I think it was I think it was through the GameCube actually for the Zelda Collector's Edition. I remember getting up to I think Death Mountain, and there was like multiple different paths that you had to constantly go through. And I was using a guide, but the game is really really hard you know you gotta stab up you gotta stab down but you gotta like make sure you stab either high or low and make sure you actually hit your opponent and you know it, it's just tough as balls it sucks it's the worst game it's just, you know 2d side scrolling that's not a zelda game i mean come on nintendo what the hell were you thinking i'm so glad you turned the series around when a link to the past came out but the adventure of link God, awful. I could never play through that game, like, ever again. I don't think I ever want to 100% that game, let alone go through it. I think if I did, I would solely use save states, but even then, I don't want to bring myself through that hell. Even my dad would agree with me. The Adventure of Link is ass. All right, well, with that all out of the way, this is the final tier list. Uh, should we make any changes? I think I'm going to make one small change. Going through the entire list and explaining all of my choices, I do want to swap A Link to the Past and A Link Between Worlds. I think A Link Between Worlds is the better game, mainly because of, you know, the 3D cutscenes and whatnot. Call me, you know, young and, you know, change, but I, I, I just think A Link Between Worlds is the better game. But... I'm going to put A Link Between Worlds in low S tier because Majora's Mask belongs in high S. Twilight Princess is my second favorite, and Spirit Tracks is my third, followed by A Link Between Worlds. And I think the rest of the list is exactly how we want it. I got to play the Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons games at some point. That way we can actually put it on the list at some point. But for now, this is my The Legend of Zelda tier list for 2024 including every single game in the entire series besides spin-offs uh, all the mainland games we rank them we explain our rankings of them and here we are this is the list i hope you guys enjoyed watching through the video again as i explained a couple times earlier in the video we do stream on this channel as well as over on my twitch channel links found down below in the description but again, we stream on Thursdays and Saturdays at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are currently making our way through Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga, and hopefully we could probably play another Zelda game at some point. Uh, maybe, probably even Metroid, because, you know, that's the reason why most people subscribe to my channel for a lot of the Metroid content. But, hey, I figured I'd make a Zelda tier list because, you know, I have a longer history with The Legend of Zelda, uh, thanks to my dad and... You know his liking for the legend of zelda i i think if my dad didn't like the legend of zelda i don't think i would like the legend of zelda as much as i do and i actually think i probably like the legend of zelda 10 times more than him but anyway if you guys enjoyed the video please sure to like the video dislike if you didn't like it and be sure to subscribe to my youtube channel for more videos like this maybe we'll make more tier lists maybe we won't i don't know uh but until the next video, and next live stream, rather, because I stream more than I make videos, I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care for now. Have a lovely day, and you guys are all awesome. Thank you so much for watching. Again, you guys are great. Bye-bye.